Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you. So in this video, let us discuss about cell membrane. So in 1950s, with the help of an electron microscope, the structure and the function of the cell membrane has been discovered. So further investigations has been done. And then Singer and Nicholson in 1972 described the cell membrane as a fluid mosaic model. So what is the discovery which was done by the Singer and Nicholson? Let us see in this theory. So to come to know about the cell membrane, firstly you have to know about the RBC cell. So at because I am taking a best example of RBC cell in this explanation. So here this RBC cell is nothing but red blood cell which consists of hemoglobin. So what is the main function of this hemoglobin? It mainly gives the red color to the cell. So this hemoglobin is present and the cell membrane is present. So as we are learning about the cell membrane, I am going to zoom this part of the cell membrane region of our red blood cell. So if we zoom this region, then this is the diagram which you can see. Uh, with the help of an electron microscope, how the image will be formed will be given at the end of the video. So now if you see here, this will be the structure of the cell membrane. So this is just a region of the zoom region of the cell membrane of the red blood cell. So if you see the diagram of the red blood, sorry, if you see the diagram of the cell membrane, so this is called as protein molecule, integrant protein molecule and this is called as peripheral protein molecule. So before entering into these molecules, the main thing which you have to remember is that this cell membrane is made up of lipid bilayer. So if you see here, this is one of the layer and this is another layer of the lipid. So here there are two surface layers, right? So the ends it is called as lipid bilayer. So here this lipid bilayer consists of one hydrophilic head and one hydrophilic tail. So each and every uh, molecule of lipid uh, consists of this hydrophilic, hy hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tail. Okay, and this hydrophilic hydrophilic head is also called as polar head, and this hydrophobic tail is also called as non-polar tail. So here it consists of glycoprotein, and here this is known as peripheral protein, and this is known as integral protein, and here this is known as surface protein. And the surface protein or peripheral proteins are both are same. Okay, and there are cholesterol molecules which are present in this uh, lipid bilayer inside the lipid bilayer so these are called as carbohydrate chains so these are all of this green color uh, like this ring uh, sorry you know this uh, all of these structures are called as carbohydrate chains which has been indicated with green in color so i have mentioned here polysaccharide chain especially because here if you see here normally the carbohydrates the more this polysaccharide chain will comes under the classification of carbohydrates only so if you know about the carbohydrate classification it consists of monosaccharide disaccharide and polycosaccharide and oligosaccharide also so if you see here i mentioned especially here polysaccharide because uh, to know so if you see here these are there are many chains which are attached with each other right so uh, when the each of the chain is attached to the uh, to each of the chain then what happens it mainly forms a polysaccharide chain so there are many chains which are attached to each other hence it forms a polysaccharide chain so there are monosaccharide chain like this and there are disaccharide chain like this and there are trisaccharide chain uh, which i have not drawn here but you know about the trisaccharide chain right so if you if you see the diagram then only you can understand how to draw the trisaccharide chain okay so normally this will be the diagram of the structure of the cell membrane so now come into the theory explanation normally coming to the first point the cell membrane consists of lipid bilayer so if you see here this is the lipid bilayer which i explained you before right and next this cell membrane region consists of a lipid bilayer right and within that lipid bilayer there is a presence of polar head which is also called as hydrophobic head which is exposed towards outside the cell and non-polar tail which is also called as hydrophobic tail which is exposed uh, towards inside the cell so if you see here this hydrophobic tail how hydrophobic head is exposed towards outside so this is called as hydrophobic head sorry hydrophilic head which is exposed towards outside and this is known as hydrophobic tail which is exposed towards inside the cell okay so this is uh, about the just introduction part and next another one more important thing which you have to remember is about the peripheral protein and integral protein so peripheral proteins are nothing but which are present at the surface of the membrane and integral proteins are present uh, totally buried in the membrane so coming to the peripheral proteins they are present at the surface of the membrane so these are the peripheral proteins which are present at the membrane surface of the membrane and these are the integral proteins which are totally buried in the membrane okay next so what i have mentioned in the before Normally, this Singer and Nicholson are the scientists who named the cell membrane as a fluid mosaic model. So, why they named this as a fluid mosaic model, let us learn now. So, if you see in the case of the diagram of cell membrane, what I have said you, this is a lipid bilayer, right? So, between these two lipid bilayers, there is a presence of quasi fluid of lipid. Lipid fluid is present in this between the two of these uh, lipid layers, okay? And this uh, fluid plays a major role 
to the cell in such a way that it mainly helps in the transport of proteins so normally this is the outside region of the cell right and this will be the inside region of the cell i mean this is the cell membrane so i have zoomed this region this is the outer region this will be the cell membrane region and this will be the inner region of the cell right so normally the proteins from here will get transported into the inside part of the cell so like this this is the outside region if you think and the proteins will get transported into the uh, inside part of the cell so this transport of proteins occurs only because of the quasi fluid of the lipid which is present between the two lipid layers so in this way the major function of the lipid so this that's that's only the major function of that lipid fluid okay so as the fluid plays a major role it is named as fluid mosaic model and normally the action of the fluid which plays a major role in this function of the cell membrane is called as fluidity and that fluidity also may also plays a major functions like cell growth cell division and endocytosis i have mentioned their cell growth because as i have said you that i have said you before that the proteins will get transported from the outer environment of the cell to the inner environment of the cell right and that occurs only because of the fluid presence so when the proteins will get transported into the cell then what happens uh, the automatically the cell growth occurs okay right so that's only the reason i mentioned the cell growth so now let us see the transport of the proteins into the cell membrane so coming to the transport of molecules in the cell membrane it occurs in the two step process passive transport and active transport these are the two types of transport uh, of molecules which you can see in the cell membrane so firstly let us discuss about the passive transport so normally the definition of the passive transport molecules or uh, transport many molecules like hydrophobic molecules or polar molecules like oxygen carbon dioxide nitrogen water molecule urea and glycerol can move briefly across the cell membrane without any requirement of energy this is called as passive transport so by this definition you can understand that so normally if you see in the case of diagram i will explain you in the case of diagram so that you can easily understand the definition so normally this is the lipid bilayer right which i explained you before so what they given in the definition many molecules like hydrophobic molecules or polar molecules or else you can also call it as a small molecules because they are very small in its structure size so this all of these molecules uh, can move briefly across the membrane so this is the outside region of the environment of the cell and this is the inner region uh, environment of the cell and this will be the cell membrane region right so the molecules all of these molecules called hydrophobic molecules can transport from the outer environment of the cell to the inner environment by the process called diffusion and here no energy is required that's nothing but no atp molecules or any type of energy is required for this transport of molecules from the outside environment to the inside environment but the process which occurs uh, which takes place by this transport is called as diffusion by the simple diffusion process uh, if you see here by the simple diffusion process along with the concentration gradient the molecules will get transported concentration gradient is nothing but from the higher concentration to the lower concentration the molecules will get transported so the molecules will get transported from the higher concentration to the lower on concentration by the simple diffusion process so this phenomena is called as osmosis so the passive transport of molecules occurs uh, with the, which exhibits the phenomena of osmosis with the help of a simple diffusion process of osmosis this passive transport of molecules occurs so this is about the passive transport so the only one and only one thing which you have to remember in this passive transport is that this passive transport of uh, molecules occurs without without using any energy without using any energy without using any requirement of energy so this this is the only thing which you have to remember in this passive transport so now let us discuss about the active transport so coming to the active transport the transport of molecules requires an energy dependent process in which atp is utilized is called as active transport and this active transport is quite opposite to the passive transport right so what i have said you in passive transport normal in passive transport energy is not utilized i mean atp molecules are not utilized but if you see in the case of active transport atp molecules are used i mean energy is used so how the atp molecules are used and why it is used let us see enough so if you see in the case of the diagram so this is the lipid bilayer i mean the cell membrane region so here in the if you see in the case of passive transport small molecules or uh, polar molecules are transported right so here non polar molecules or uh, which are also called as large molecules will get transported so in the name itself it indicates that large molecules right large molecules cannot transport from the outer outer environment to the inner environment of the cell but this atp molecules will get combined to the particular protein and that atp molecule will mainly helps in the transport of large molecules into the cell so how the atp molecules will play a major role let us enough so this is the normal case in such a way that this large molecules will enter and this protein will stop it because it stuck over here itself so when the atp molecule will get joined to this carrier protein then automatically what happens is that the atp molecule will be joined and immediately the shape of the protein will get changed in such a way that the protein will get uh, diffused out so here 
it follows against the concentration gradient that's nothing but it moves from the lower concentration to the higher concentration because uh, if you by this by this diagram by this diagrammatic explanation only you can understand how the molecules will get transported that's nothing but from the lower concentration to the higher concentration right so this is about the active transport and here atp molecule that's nothing but energy is used in the active transport but if you see in the case of passive transport atp molecules is not used so this is about the cell membrane friends hope this video will be helpful for you people thank you for watching this video guys if you like this video just do like and subscribe and if you have any doubts regarding this video please comment in the comment box and if you have if you want to have notes of this cell membrane then you can join to us in whatsapp group and the link of that invite link of the whatsapp group will be given in the description box so you can join there and you can ask for donuts thank you